Hi, I'm Paul, and I'm the lead technician at the uh, How to Linux Research Labs. And today, I'm going to show you how to install Node.js runtime on Pop OS Linux 22.04. Okay, let's get started. Okay, here's my Pop installation here. Now I'm going to go to the now uh, we're going to put the Node.js runtime on here, and I'm going to do it in a one-user configuration. So we're going to extract everything out to the home directory as opposed to uh, a, a more of a global path like uh, USR uh, forward slash bin or local or bin or whatnot. So we're going to do it for a one-user configuration. So it won't be for all users are on the system, only for whatever one user that's on the system. Or the uh, the home fo the home folder for the particular user. In my case, it'll be Paul, okay? Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create, I'm going to go to the terminal here, and I'm going to show you that I don't already have Node installed. Otherwise, this would give me some kind of output here. And as you can see, nothing's outputting. Okay, so it's not installed. So once we're done, we'll come back to these commands here, and we'll run these commands, and we'll verify that node has been installed. Okay, so we'll clear on that. Now I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a directory that I'm gonna extract the uh, the the the, uh, the archived and compressed contents to once we download. The tar file and extract it. We're gonna, I'm gonna extract it here. You can uh, create your own directory and call it whatever you'd like. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna just call it Node.js. How's that? Okay. And to verify that it's actually been created, we'll do an LSA and we'll look for it here. Okay, here it is. So right now there's nothing in here. Once we're done, this will be populated. Okay, so we'll clear on that. Done with the terminal for the moment. And we'll pop open the browser. And I'm already on the download page. So the, the home page will be nodejs.org. And then make your way to this download page uh, for Linux on an, X, on an X64 system. Now we're gonna steer clear of the the uh, the the the, uh, the the current uh, release because it could be unstable, to say the least. Of course, you get the latest features, but that comes with the risk of instability. So, hey, it even says right here recommended for most users. So we're gonna go with this uh, LTS version here, eighteen point sixteen point zero. Okay, okay. So pretty simple. We're going to click on that and wait for the download. Now, my browser is, is with most browsers, I think. The default download save location will be the download folder. So once this is done, I can X that out. Minimize the browser window. Go back to the terminal. I'm going to CD into the download folder. And I'm going to spot the tar file that we just that I just downloaded. LSA on that, and it should be down here in the ends. Okay, here it is. Node in the versions right, and it's a tar.xz file. Okay, good. Perfect. So I'm going to clear on that, and I'm going to go into a sudo session. I'm going to use the tar the tar archive utility here to extract the compressed contents from that compressed tar archive file okay and we're going to pass a few flags into here x, x for extract v for verbose so we can see what the um, what the uh, the extraction process is doing and f for it to be told that to be to be to be prepared to accept the file that's going to be passed into the tar utility 
So we need these three flags here, X, V, F, and I don't think you need an extra flag to actually untar or uncompress an XZ file. If we if if I need that, then I'll add that. Otherwise, I'm just going to go with these three uh, flags for now. Okay. So once I've got that, I can go ahead and start keying in the file. A couple of the keystrokes, hit the tab button, it auto-completes because that's the only N in that folder. So I have to type all this out. I can just type in N, N, O, and then tab, and then it auto-completes the, the, the entire uh, file name here. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and redirect it to that uh, Node.js folder that I just created. Okay. And uh, that path is this right here. Actually, I don't think I need home because the tilde takes care of the home. So I think I just go Paul. No. Maybe I need to put in the, uh, the home just to be on this. This Paul should work here. Let's see. Okay, let's see what this does here. Okay, I guess I did not need the tilde, but just the path as it is without the tilde. So home, Paul. So yeah, okay, so it's going to, we're going to pass the tar file into tar here. And it's going to extract it out to that folder that I created. Home, Paul, Node.js. Okay? Okay, great. So once you've keyed all that in properly like that, go ahead and enter on that. And what you're seeing here is the V flag showing what it's doing. And that was pretty quick. If you don't have the V flag, you don't see all this output here. It's good to have the V flag. That way you know it's doing something. Okay, so we'll clear on that. Go back to the home, clear on that, and we'll look for that folder one more time. Okay, it's still there, good. Clear on that, and we're going to CD into it, and then clear it, get some extra space, and then just check the contents to make sure it's been populated with something. Now, actually, this is a little, this is going to be a little, um, a little confusing. The Node.js is what I created. This is the actual folder that comes with the archive. But I always like to make one main one like this because it just looks like it just looks more I don't know recognizable as opposed to kind of gibberish here. So by seeing Node.js, it just makes for easier reading of your of your folders. So it's kind of nested. It's a little redundant, but. I, I think it serves a pretty good purpose because usually, I mean, would you rather have Node.js or, or this uh, this string here for the folder? Anyway, so okay, yeah, okay, I did that once. Okay, so there's another subfolder in here. Okay, now I'm into the meat of the uh, I'm into the meat of the matter here. So once I do an LSA on here, we should see you know some files and whatnot. Okay, good. This is work, so now we got something to work with here. Okay? And on to the next step. Okay, so once we extracted the contents and we seeded, we seeded into it just to take a look around, we don't have to do any more in that folder. So go back, so go back to your, your home root, and in the home root, use your editor. I'm using a nano. And I'm going to go ahead and open the bashrc file and make an edit there. I'm going to add the Node.js binary path to the path system variable so we can access it from the command line. Okay, so nano.bashrc bash RC should open this, um, this uh, bash shell configuration file here for a local user. For uh, actually, I think it would be considered a um, a non-login shell. Okay, for that for the user on the user level. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and open that, and you can see there's no error saying that it's not that it's only you know 
readable or whatever. So the permissions are okay here. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here. You can forget all this stuff here. Okay. You can see I have, I have um, something on the path already. Python 10, looks like. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a little space there. And I'm going to type in the, uh, the command to add the Node.js uh, binary path to the actual system path variable. Okay, so here's the um, here's the path that I want to put on the on the actual path variable. So we're gonna you know, export. This is a bit, this will make it persistent across all reboots. So let's try this one here. Export path equals the path variable, and then of course here's the uh, the path to the um, to the node binary. Home Paul node. J, that's what we created or I created. And this is what it came with, this folder here, and the bin, which is the binary folder or the executable. So this is the path we're going to use. I might have to append something to the end here if this doesn't work. So I'm going to go with this as my first option. So I'm going to go ahead and, and um, save this, and then I'm going to try to see if this works. And then if not, I'm, I have another op, another. Uh, couple things up my sleeve that I can add to the end here. This might, well, let's try to see if this works first, okay? So I'm going to key that path, that path in here and add it to the path variable, okay? So once that's keyed in, Control-O to save it in Nano, and then Control-X to exit Nano, a lot better than Vim or V, if you ask me. I don't know why people want to use Vim or V sometimes, to be honest. Anyway, so we'll clear on that, and I'm going to go ahead and um, I can either uh, for this change for this change to take effect. So right now it's not in effect yet. I'm going to have to do something like you know restart, relog in, log out, log in, or whatever. So you, and just by closing the terminal, the the shell is not going to be enough. You have to actually log out, log in, whatever. So either you can log out through the settings up here. The log login logout manager, re, do a reboot, or if you want to just stay right here, we can use the um, the source command here, and we're going to source that that bash rc file that I just edited. So the tilde is for the home, and it's a dot file, which means it's hidden. Key in a couple, okay, it works, and then there's my bash rc. So without leaving the system or rebooting, logging out, logging in. I can stay right here and use the source command to make the changes take effect now. Okay? So I don't have to restart. I don't even think at this point I even have to close my, my shell or anything. So let's see let's stay right here and we'll see what happens. So remember last time I tried to get the version this way and um, it, it couldn't find it because it wasn't installed, it wasn't on the path and whatnot. Now we've installed it and we put it on the path. So let's see if this works now. Okay, great. So everything I did to this point was spot on and I'm right where I want to be with, with the Node JavaScript runtime. And of course, to use it, you invoke Node here and then you pass in your, your, uh, your, Java, your JavaScript source source file code your source code file here now okay so that's done and you can see we got the most current version okay to this point this is great now I'm going to go ahead and clear on that and I'm going to see if it also bundled to the npm and now the npm is the um, the package manager for, for, uh, for JavaScript or particularly well, I guess all for all JavaScript, certainly for it's the package manager for um, for Node. So let's see if, if if it bundled that in there. Okay, so npm is bundled in as well. I'm not sure what the most current version of npm is. I would imagine if the um, since I just did the um, the uh, the binary with the most current w uh, version of Node, that this probably is probably pretty good as well. So you can use npm to install packages as needed. One more thing I want to check real quick is the MPX, which is a little bit 
not as familiar to people. Um, NPX, I do believe it. So, like, you know, NPM will install packages. And NPX is kind of a runner. It kind of does things for you. That's kind of hard. I, I have to look it up again. But it, so NPM kind of, so the node runtime, you know, interprets the JavaScript source code. NPM, you know, installs uh, Node and or JavaScript packages, and NPX actually runs things. It's kind of hundred. So if you need something actionable, NPX is what is what's gonna do do that for you. Let's see if that's already installed as well. Okay, good. And that should really cover your your basic tool chain. I do believe for uh, for JavaScript, or at least for Node, in the terminal. So you got Node runtime. You got the npm package manager and the npx uh, runner, I guess is what it would be called. I'd, I'd have to look it up to get the exact terminology, but th you know, this is installs, this runs, this is you know actionable, whatever. Okay, so that's pretty much about it. At that point, you've got Node, you have Node runtime, the most current stable LTS. Uh, Node.js runtime installed on your on your Linux um, installation. Okay, so that's really about it. Um, I would suggest you know poke around the uh, the Node website here for documentation and whatnot. Otherwise, that's it. So so that's it. We installed um, I installed on uh, the Node.js runtime on. Pop OS Linux 22.04, and it also bundled in the npm package manager and the npx uh, runner. I guess I, I'm not sure what it's called exactly. I, I, I'll, I'll look it up later. So we got Node npm and uh, npx installed on Pop OS Linux 22.04. Okay, thank you for watching, and uh, I am Paul. And I am the lead technician at the uh, How to Linux Research Labs. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to your comments and your feedback. Thank you for now. Thank you, and bye bye for now.